to the Goody Room, your one-stop shop for everything movies, TV, and more. We know you want the goodies. Welcome back to the Goody Room. I'm your host, Matt the Nanches, here again with my man in the chair, Frankie Rock. Let's go! Let's go indeed. Back with another episode. We're just firing them off for you people. We got a great show today. We're going to try a few new things for you. We got a couple new segments. You know, we're going to start it off with some news and notes, which we're calling Need to Know. You know, you need to know it. We're telling you, we're helping you out, the people, right? The people. Then we got some new segments that we're trying. One is going to be called uh, the Goody Room Lectures. So that is you know, topics that Frank and I want to bring up, talk to you, educate you a little bit. Um, and today's theme is going to be on collecting. So we got that coming up. Plus another new segment we're calling Retro Council retro recommendations in other words older movies that aren't new that we enjoy we rewatch we recommend that you give them a watch and we're going to tell you a little bit about them frank anything before we get started with uh, the retro council also movies that matt and i um have quoted still quote and will forever quote endlessly that is a fact Right. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into it. We're going to start off here with the need to know uh, news here. Frank, why don't you go ahead and, you know, give the people the, the sad news? Well, unfortunately, you know, we were looking forward to bringing you need to know news. Unfortunately, though, the need to know news as of September 6th of this recording, it, we had to report on death. Uh, two musicians, um, uh, passed away over the Labor Day weekend. One was Jimmy Buffett, and the other was the lead st- singer of Smash Mouth, uh, Steve Harwell. You know, we're just hoping that they both are enjoying uh, cheeseburgers in paradise together. Yeah, for sure. I share my condolences there, uh, especially to the you know their families. Um, but uh, tough news to to kind of give you guys to start off the show. But, you know, I know that thinking of both uh, both singers and artists that I can think of countless songs that a lot of us probably know word for word that, you know, they had just brought us endless joy and happiness through their their art. And, you know, we thank them for it. But, you know, Matt, you put it best. The condolences to their friends, their families, their loved ones. Yeah. So that unfortunately we had to kick off need to know news with some sad news but hopefully in the future you know we'll have something more happy to bring to you yeah i agree so we'll go ahead and we're going to kick it off into our new segment here that we're calling goody room lectures again this is where frank and i are going to talk about topics that we enjoy things that come to mind really what kind of made the goody room the goody room is the theme of today's right and that is collecting AKA the slippery slope. <laughs> the slippery slope. Slippery yeah, slope. if you recall, Frank is referring to the slippery slope that well was hot toys, but it's really anything that comes to mind. For example, Frank sent me a graphic novel the other day and I'm already looking at others, right? That is the slippery slope that we're talking about that is collecting. So if you listen to episode one, um, our first segment, Children with Adult Money, I had bought the graphic novel, uh, The Last Ronin. And I know that Matt would never be caught dead buying that for himself. And I thought the only way he'll ever read it is if it randomly arrives in the mail. So I thought, hey, you know, he's been working hard. He deserves something cool. So I sent him the the last Ronin and this guy reads it. And within two days of it arriving, he goes, I need another one. And I sent him like four different ideas of what he, where he could go next. And he goes, I think I'm just going to do them all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's bad. And that's, and that's kind of how it starts, right? You know, I've always been interested. In, I am a comic book fan. I love especially the art and, you know, Graphic novels, 
is just another form of comic books. They put a bunch of different comics together so you don't have to collect them, uh, the single ones. Like, for example, I have in collect, I, I had, well, I still have, but I've stopped because it's just not sustainable, is single copies of the Amazing Spider-Man series. And then I have individual copies of specific uh comic issues like secret wars i believe it's number nine where he first gets introduced in the venom suit i'm actually looking at it on the side of my wall if you see me looking off the screen and then i bought oh sorry good you're good man and then i bought uh they made actually a remake of that with the miles morales suit uh and that they released i think it was at a comic con and i bought that one too and i have them sitting next to each other but like i have a number of amazing spider-man comics and that's just one thing in my collection he's been actually really modest about his amazing spider-man collection um he has a couple of uh books on his wall or his mantle i don't know what you, the heck you want to call it that would make any collector go ooh or ah in fact you know to help with his collection i'll know i think it was your 30th birthday party where your your what? parents yeah, his parents throw him a surprise birthday party. And, you know, people are getting him, like, adult gifts or whatever. Well, here comes me. I got on eBay, and I got him this, like, Spider -Man, Amazing Spider-Man annual where it has Doctor Strange on the cover. And I know Matt likes Doctor Strange, too. So I thought, oh, you know, give him something a little bit different. And he pulls this comic book out of the bag. And the whole room, like, his friends, his family are, like, looking at him like, what is this? And there's me just sitting in the background. Yeah, he's more making eye contact. Like, yes, we. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's the that's the thing with collecting, right? You know, especially with us being fans of comics with movies. There's always merchandise that comes out, and, and a lot of the things that I do collect are things that I couldn't have as a kid. Now, right, one could argue I was a collector as a kid. Oh, um, my first when you first uh, brought up, um, hey, we're going to, you know, let's talk about collecting. I was like, absolutely. The two things that came to mind were action figures and then DVDs. Um, you know, I'd go to the store and it even if I didn't like like the character, let's say if it was Star Wars, I did, it didn't matter if I liked it or not. I had it. I had the rest of them. So I needed to have um the character that i didn't necessarily like or wanted it just like it he's on the packaging with everybody else so i need to have that action figure yeah and i want to say that's probably what started for me when i was growing up um i collected i would say really two things movies was by far and away my main collecting item i mean i had tons of movies and i was just buying them just for something to watch you know right. uh, i just en enjoyed getting caught up in a movie i was going out I, I used to actually have even a calendar of all the new release movies throughout the summer that i was going to go to and i had them all marked down on the calendar and i would say then the other thing is i don't know how many of you are on youtube watching these but i'm actually back into it i used to collect a lot of hats and you know i wear a hat on every episode it's it's usually different right right so, oh absolutely well i, I you know when, before we started recording tonight i commented on your shirt and then i you know i said how i liked your shirt i was like nice shirt and then i saw the hat and i was like oh gosh like coordination this guy yeah well you know from children with adult money it, i think the majority of my picks have been t-shirts like graphic yeah. shirts is like another thing i've kind of gotten caught up into uh for those of you that don't know me i really like the streetwear uh style so a lot of my graphic shirts are that i'm wearing a, an mba a jordan verse uh barkley shirt you know from the suns and i have a, a suns cap on that's a little bit different the suns uh, logo is flipped upside down and frank knows from college days i always have unique hats you you had all the hats and, you know, you were talking about collecting movies like DVDs. That's when I really started really collecting things. And 
you know, as, as fun as it was, and not that I, I had a, a childhood where my parents told me no a whole lot. I was very blessed. And, you know, they, they, they fed into my habits, which was cool. But every now and again, um, my, I'd be like, dad, this movie is coming out Tuesday. Can I, can I get it? Can I spend some of my money on it? And he'd tell me no. And, but what he didn't know was like through this collecting habit, you know, there, there's probably like some, maybe a doctor or someone's listening to this where it's like, no, this actually is a case of OCD. I'll never forget, like, the instant that stuck out to me was The Matrix Revolutions, which is Matrix 3 was coming out. And I said, Dad, can I go get this movie? And he said, no. And he and then he started ca calling me out because, like, I must have had, like, this face of disappointment. It wasn't disappointment so much, but it was like, but I have the other two. I need this for the collection so it's complete. And I'm and like, I was just trying to process the fact that, and I wasn't trying to argue with my dad, but I like, I was like trying to like process in my mind, like, all right, it's no, it's not going to happen. But every fiber of my being was like, but we need it, which we didn't. But like, this is, this is what it's like to be a collector sometimes. Like sometimes it's just not going to happen. This is how I picture your dad coming up to you and, and telling you no. How about no? <laughs> that probably. That's you know. that's how I picture it. But you're right. You know, and my brother and I had that rule actually in our household. If you bought one of the movies, you had the rights, the exclusive rights. We used to like we just would it was just known. You had the rights to buy the rest of that series. Almost the responsibility to, you know, complete the collection. Right. He broke that because he bought episode two, uh, Attack of the Clones. Or he clone can have that one. He yeah, can have I, that I, one. And I said, I said, you can, you can, you can just keep that one. That's right. <laughs> Even uh, though, like, when, you know, uh, the, the last couple Star Wars movies were coming out, and, you know, anytime a new one come out, I'd rewatch them all. Like, I did grow a small appreciation for Attack of the Clones. I'm not saying I like it, but like there are parts though that I do find entertaining. Right. But you know, it just it goes to the point like that's part of the collecting habit. Like some of the things like are even bad, like parts of like the series, right? You might have, you know, three, four, five movies, but you buy them all, you know. Uh, when it comes to DVDs, one of the big things I know, and I know you like this too, Frank, right? But we would we would actually look at the cases and decide oh. what case we were going to buy. <laughs> right. And, you know, because how many times um, have I called you and you're like, well, I got this version. And it's like, huh, I waited for the Target exclusive steel book version. And you're like, oh, I should have waited or whatever. In fact, the movie that we're going to be talking about next um, in retro council, Scott Pilgrim is one of the few movies that I have a steel case for, but we're going to get into that later. But, you know, has there ever been a, you know, I, I think you would agree with it. My favorite um, thing about DVDs and collecting Blu-rays are the box sets. Love a good box set. Love, yes. love, love a good box set. And my favorite box set of all time, hands down, is the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray extended edition collection because how the, the like the magnetized box, each movie is its own thing and has its own different artwork. But when you open it up, it's the map of Middle, Middle Earth and everything. It's just gorgeous. And 100%. Shut up and take my money. Just, uh, you know, j just a well thought out, well executed um, box set. Uh, the next one I would say, hands down, is the Dark Knight, the original Dark Knight trilogy box set. So listen, that's where I was going next is the box set. So I'm glad you went there, right? Wow, the Force, baby, bringing us together it, yet again. It it really is. It it does it all the time. It's unreal. Just for those of you like you, I you don't probably know. We don't bring it up enough, but. Frank and I can almost read each other's minds at this point in our friendship, but it back to the box sets. <laughs> it gets it gets way deep. So but deep. Back, to, back to the box sets, though. Yes, the Lord of the Rings, and you actually told me about that Lord of the Rings one, and I waited. I would wait till like Black Friday, Christmas time, because that's when all of that stuff goes on sale. And what was uh, what was the site we used oh, to get? Blu-ray.com, and it's still active. Yeah. And the beauty of this site, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that 
it will scour the internet daily for you and it will put up all the deals on DVDs and Blu-rays and now 4K and whatever. And when you click it, it will take you to that site where it's the cheapest. Yeah, so that was that was a good one. I waited for that one for a while because uh, I wanted it because I wanted the extended versions. I needed the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings. I couldn't just have the regular ones. And I wanted the box set. Yep. I had the box set of that rocky had to have rocky it was a huge rocky fan growing up um oh, do you remember that's... when i came back when we lived together in college i came back from like christmas break or spring break and i had the rocky set on blu-ray and i, yeah. I feel like we didn't go to class for like two days we're like ah it's overrated but yeah and like that's an example again of you know rocky five stinks right but it was in oh. that box set but you had to have them all it's like right. pokemon you had to catch them all that's right. Um, another box set that is just kind of kind of of that vein where not every movie is good. I have um, the Alien Quadrilogy, which is Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, and then Alien Resurrection. Only two of those movies are good. However, this box set, it comes with like artwork and a different like separate book and, you know, all the special features on each disc, like really break down, like how the movie came to be who was originally involved, like just that in itself is worth it. Even though alien three and alien resurrection are really bad movies. But as you said, like that's part of collecting. Sometimes you're just going to, you know, you, you can't get the great without, you know, the garbage. Right. And I would say my top box set, and I have to agree with you that original, like that dark night one, when I first saw that, and I almost bought the special edition one where it came with the broken mask yep. as well too. But that just like the matting and just the presentation of it and it came with like a little kind of like book. It wasn't like a comic, but it was like, no. of, it like, was like the artwork of the trilogy. Yeah. Right. And, and I thought that was cool. I, I love that. And then of course, like, I would say the other one I really like is the Harry Potter box set. I, I waited for that for a while to go on sale. And that's one that you got. And I waited until the next like Black Friday or sale because you got it for like 20 bucks or something like that. And after he got it, I had missed the sale by like 15 minutes and it shot back up to like 50, 60 bucks, which, you know, I, I, I own the movies already. And that's another thing about collecting. You sometimes rebuy things that you already own to have a better complete um, set of them. And Harry Potter was one of those. And I waited for another sale until it went down to like 20. I think I got it for 25. And we had the same set. It's the one where it's the, in the first movie, Sorcerer's Stone, where they're heading towards the castle and the boats right on the front. Yeah. 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 Oh, great set. Great set. Yeah. And that's the thing too, like, you know, they're so expensive, right? But yeah. they are like the, the cream of the crop, you know, of DVD collecting. And, you know, the list goes on and we could sit here and talk about box sets all day, but that that's just an example of the slippery slope that collecting, it really is. And, you know, Frank, you talk about even rebuying things. Like I had a lot of movies originally when I started on DVD, well, DVD isn't really a well-formatted, you know, no. picture and everything now, especially for today's TVs. I kid you not, I put on my DVD copy of Gladiator. This was like almost a year ago. I put it in. I made it to the start menu, and I immediately took it out and bought it on digital 4K. Is it because <laughs> it wasn't like it was widescreen? It's because it was like a smaller screen within the screen? It's it the picture's grainy. Yeah, it's so grainy. Like it, you just, it's not clear. Like the standard today of movies and how they're shooting them, and we talked about this even with the Flash with CGI. Right. It's just you can see clearly the difference. I remember we talked about this back when even Blu-ray became a thing. Right. Uh, DVD between Blu-ray, people will be like, oh, I can't see the difference. You could see the difference. If you right. can't see the difference between a DVD and a Blu-ray, you are you might be blind. You right. might have to get your eyes checked out. And not only that, um, I agree you might be blind because I know my wife calls me out all the time because we'll be talking. People will spring, what, what's the difference between Blu-ray and 4K? 
and they'd be like, well, there's not a difference. And then uh, my wife will throw in. She'll be like, Frank can tell a difference. It's like, well, here's the thing, though. You and I have both. We have we put a significant amount of money into our setups, our TVs, our sound system, things like that. We have the right chords to properly play the, the movies that. So when we put an old DVD in there, yeah, it looks grainy as heck, man. And it just it doesn't look like VHS. It looks like if you're uh, of a certain generation, it looks like if you took a VHS and taped something off basic cable, that's what it looks like. And that and, you know, that's not good. Well, and, you know, um, where I'm going next is where you don't really get that is with the really old movies, like the movies from the 80s. Right. Because you kind of grew up seeing it in that picture format. Right. It doesn't bother you. Right. But when you see something like Gladiator, like that was a great movie when it came out, you know, the graphics, everything, best picture winner. It just doesn't hold up to today's standards and technology. And sometimes it goes, you know, it goes a little, it, it's the backward theory on that because one of my favorite books and movies of all time is Fight Club. I love the movie Fight Club. And I love the fact that it's like, it kind of had it purposely looks like dark and gritty and grainy and everything. I have it on DVD. And at one point I had bought it on Blu-ray and the Blu-ray cleared up the grain and the grit and everything. And it just looked too clean. I actually gave that copy away to a friend. And now anytime I watch Fight Club, if it's not that DVD I bought back probably in 2007 or 2008, I won't watch it because it has that it's it's all about, you know, just the kind of the first time I watched it. And I don't want to see Fight Club in any other way than that kind of grainy, gritty vibe to it, because it it honestly enhances the movie for me. Yeah, I agree with you. And there there are movies where it works and there are movies where you would prefer that old kind of grainy version of it. But, you know. I have to kind of move on to maybe even like where collecting even started for me. You know, I was thinking the other day, right. And I I think my mom was a collector. She collected beanie babies. She bought us all the new power Rangers. Like we had to have all the power Rangers. We had all the megazords, all the characters. I mean, she stood in line. You used to have to stand in line, right. To get this stuff. Your parents had to, you know, go, early stand in line these toys would sell out my dad has horror stories for um standing in line for power rangers but go ahead well yeah good i'm i'm glad you know what senior frank you gotta earn those toys to earn your kids love (laughs) all right you know that was future matt saying hello (laughs) hello anyway dude um, I, please tell the story about your mom and the dragon zord. Oh no, that's a, you're a good man. I, I was just going. I think oh, I get a lot of my collecting vibe from her, and you know, movies I got into, and I collected hats, and it just kind of grew. And a lot of the things I collect, you know, figures now as well too. You started the Funko Pop thing. I told you not to buy me a Funko Pop. Oh, I bought me a Funko Pop, and now I have. More Funko Pops than I want. I don't have a lot, but I have too many. I am at a point with Funko Pops where I want to. It's not a new school year unless I'm decorating my desk with new Funko Pops. And I, I, I splurged a little bit last year and I got some of the Harry Potter ones that are a little bit pricier. And I'm looking at them like, I love you guys, but like, you know, you're, you're old and busted. I need the new hotness. Yeah. What's another thing we we started with with the figures was Black Series. Oh, uh, okay. Those figures. So Star Wars has, you know, they have their regular like 3.7 inch figures, which, you know, we all grew up with. And, you know, I still have some of them. But uh, about 10 years ago or around the time The Force Awakens came out when Disney bought Star Wars, they, they started... Um, not high end, but middle tier, six inch scale. Um, you know, more articulation. Oh, go ahead. They were really, they were really good quality for six inch scale at the time. Was, at the yeah. time, yes. And uh, you know, 
it started when I had first moved out to Ohio and there was there used to be a toy store in this one building downtown Mount Vernon, which we call the square. And there 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 has been so many businesses in and out of um, this location. But when it was a toy store, like I went in there and I bought a Han Solo uh, Black Series and I came home and I'm like calling Matt and I said, Matt, you'll never believe what I got. And he was coming out to see me within the next month. And by the time he came out, him and I had already bought. We were just we couldn't stop, you know, just. Well, and the thing that attracts it to, at least for me as well, is like the collectability. You know, you look at the prices of some of these things go up. I know I've bought and sold some uh, Black Series, like uh, the Kmart, I believe, out my way, which is a retail store that used to be around here. Uh, they were going out of business, and some of the things on sale were Black Series. And I bought a Jabba uh, the Hut Black Series, which was humongous. Like this, this was, you know, you, this is six scale, six inch scale figures. So this was to scale of that. So this was a humongous figure, this job of the hut. Okay. I resold that. I got it for like pennies and I resold it for, you know, not a ton of money, but more than what it was really, I, I think I it was worth or I bought it for. Same thing with the speeder bike. Oh, I yeah. had it. From uh, Endor, right when they're you know in the forest, and uh, had the stormtrooper on it, it was awesome. I loved it, right? And thank God I sold it because they re-released it, and that was why I got out of Black Series because they just kept re-releasing these figures, and they killed the collectability of it. Well, that's what happened. Like when they finally re-released Boba Fett, you and I were so excited to get Boba Fett, but by the time Matt and I finally got Boba Fett, like you couldn't resell him for more than you bought it for. And I was like, well, what was the point of this? But two of my favorite black series stories involved Matt. And one of them was Kmart. I miss Kmart. Cause they had, they had all the cool exclusives. Uh, they had this Kylo Ren standing on star killer base. And yeah. Yeah. And I was visiting. Um, she was my girlfriend at the time. Now my wife, um, she used to live in a town that had a K Kmart where Matt and I went to college. And I said, Hey, I'm going to go, we're going to the mall to see a movie today. And the mall had the movie theater and a Kmart. And I, after the movie, we ran over to Kmart and they, and I got the final two Kylo Ren on star killer base. And he didn't ask me to do this, but I, I, I got him one and we get back to our apartment and I just, it, we sent him a video of me with my hand on top of one Kylo Ren. And then I like for dramatic effect pause. And then I moved the first one away. So he saw the second one. I was like, ah, <laughs> that is one of the best ones still yeah. to this day. I love that one. I kept it in the box. It's downstairs, but yeah, I agree with you. That was one of the top ones, especially at that time. And I was so stoked that you found it because it was not around any right. of the stores. But that's another thing that they were doing to kind of help the collectability too. And I found that out later as I was buying them that you really had to look for these store exclusives. Those are the ones that are not going to re-release. So if you are into Black Series and that's something you like, and you like seeing the value. Like I like seeing the value of my items go up in case sure. I ever swap things out or get other things. Um, look for the exclusives. Well, one I actually have displayed right above me, and let's see if I can get it down here and get it up on the screen. Ooh. But it is the Emperor Palpatine Amazon exclusive. This was an exclusive sold only, you know, on Amazon. And I want to say that was maybe $50, that which is an expensive figure for Black Series. But the difference with that is he came with the throne chair and you could actually interchange his heads. It came with extra heads, which I thought was pretty cool. I like the hands with the lightning coming out that you can plug in too. You can do the force lightning. Yeah. That, which is cool too. And like, like I love it and it actually resells for a decent amount of money now. Um, but I will never sell it because I just, I love the look of it. I love, I love the packaging 
on some of these things. So speaking of packaging, uh, what two or three years ago now, they had released. So just like the Black Series, Marvel, um, they have a, a line called Marvel Legends, which is, to put it politely, very much so hit or miss. Um, especially when they're trying to recreate a um, an actor from a movie, if they're doing like Guardians of the Galaxy three, those figures look like absolute crap. So bad, so bad. Like, what are they doing with some of those? Right, they look, can, they're look, rushing them out. They just rush them out. It looks like Oppenheimer dropped a nuke on them. <laughs> so about two or three years ago, I saw online that they were releasing. Um, you know, Spider-Man figures from the show in the nineties that, you know, Matt and I grew up with, and I'm sure a few of our listeners grew up with that too. But the beauty of these figures was if you ever bought a Spider-Man toy from that cartoon in the nineties, they had that box artwork and they recreated that box artwork for these figures. And again, these are six inch scale figures. And I remember when I got the Kingpin figure, I took a photo um, for, of it with Matt, and just to kind of show him the size, I put a bottle of wine next to it, and the figure was bigger than the wine, the bottle of wine. But anyway, I got these not because I had any intention of reselling these. I was like, oh, I'm going to put these up on a shelf, make it look real nice, and I put some box Funko Pops between them. Matt, you you remember the shelf? Yeah, that shelf. They, they were nice. I was jealous of those because I'm a Spider Man fan, and those were some cool figures, but. I, I kind of got out of doing the whole toy figure thing because Black Series had really burned me out. Oh, and and we'll 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 circle back to what happened with Black Series. But so the one day I'm just putzing around on eBay, you know, you're you're just browsing, you're looking around, and I see these Spider-Man figures. I bought them for twenty, thirty dollars a piece, even Kingpin. They were going for like ninety to one hundred and twenty dollars, and I immediately was like. I don't love these this much. I had Matt had to walk me through how to sell things on eBay and I made quite the profit on those toys. Yeah. And I took no commission, no, but that's because you're a good friend. You're a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> someone say that, but yeah, that's part of the collectability, at least for me is, you know, I don't do it specifically for the resale value. I do it because I love the look of something. I love the artwork. I keep a lot of things in boxes because I do hope one day it is worth some money. And that's part of kind of the thrill for me. But I love the artwork on these boxes. The Funko Pop, awesome. Black Series, awesome. Right? So, you can see behind me, I have a bunch of artwork hanging up. One of the, what, what he's talking about, the artwork on the boxes, one of my favorite Star Wars Black Series is The Mandalorian. And on the one side, it just has this cool artwork of him up and down the spine. And I just think that's so sick. Well, you know why they started doing that is because on the older ones, that's on the back. Right. You can't see what it is. Well, I also have Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Obi-Wan show. It has right up the spine. But the same piece of artwork is on the back. But now they're doing it on the sides. That way, when you put them on the shelf, you can, you can, see, it. You can see it and you don't have to I put them this way you have more room to buy more toys we see what you're doing disney we see you i, I you know, when i saw that i knew exactly what they were doing it's so funny you have right i knew these are the newer ones because they they changed that box not that long ago. right i like matt i fell out of doing the star wars black series because after a while i think it was around this you know disney was just kind of releasing a new movie every year and the quality took an insane dip. Like these toys look like crap. And not only that, the price went up. They used to be what, $15, $20 a pop? Yeah, something like that. And they went up to like $30, $35. And I'm just like, oh. oh. And I bought those two that I just showed you on sale. And the only reason I, I and I have a lot of them, you know, in the box, in and out of the boxes, because I sometimes take them out of the box to pose them on my bookshelf or whatever, because I'm like that. But those two, I only bought those because I think Disney's Star Wars movies are not great at all. Um, I used to think they were good, but now I, I, I know better. But I think their TV shows are much better, specifically The Mandalorian. Love The Mandalorian. Um, so I will buy one every now and again, but it has to be the right character and they have to do a good job because not all Star Wars Black series are made in equal anymore. 
Yeah, those are the the Mandalorian was a good one. That was one I almost bought, but you know the the Black Series. You're right; the quality took a hit. I didn't even know the price went up because I stopped doing it. I actually went and you know this is where Instagram can be problems. You follow these pages, right? And these algorithms, they see that, and then it's all in your feed. And that was the thing is, you know, you follow these pages, especially Black Series, you would see all the new releases. I stopped seeing all those pages specifically because I I didn't want to get caught up in buying anymore. Well, you actually had to tell me that because around May or June with Hot Toys, I would, I, I, you know, you were like, you're getting the, you're getting the black series sickness again. I was like, Oh, it feels a lot like that. But the, but the hot toys are so much better. And you're like, they are, but you, you said unfollow every hot toy thing on Instagram. And I did, I don't see any hot toys in my feed anymore. Good. Good. Right. You know, now if we can just get the hot toy thing under control, you know, we'll be good. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I'm trying to keep it at two and I'm done. Um, I'm I, I I don't I'm not subscribing to that yet because I, I I know because I have the Dark Knight hot toy I have the Mandalorian which is as you saw him he he's not going in a case he gets his own display because he's that good um, we have uh, the Batman coming in and then I also pre-ordered that Michael Keaton Batman because I, I just want the Batman case so you know probably after that but you know i did pass on the heath ledger joker i i almost did it i almost did it yeah the the michael keaton one i am jealous of but i'm i'm really hoping the the one i originally wanted to buy which would have been my first hot toy was the batman returns michael keaton so i i don't want to say i'm keeping it at whatever my number will be three or four because i I am also secretly hoping they had the batman returns one come out because i'm going to put them together and it's going to look sick yeah no yeah i'm putting a kibosh on that no no kibosh unkibosh it (laughs) no you're done you're done so i i I think that this is a good you know a, a good point to end because there's about 400 other things i could talk about collecting on and i think that you know with these goodie room lectures i think this is a great idea on your part you know just because we're not we don't next lecture might be something different doesn't mean we can't revisit a topic because i didn't even talk about the transformers and matt knows i have so many transformers but that just goes to show what a slippery slope it is. But I agree with you. We got to move on. But this is definitely a topic we'll have to revisit. And I mean, hey, we like goodies too. That's why it's the goodie room, guys. Right. And it doesn't have to be toys or whatever. You like baseball cards? Because I know that like that came back in the sneakers. last couple of years. Sneakers. I like sneakers. sneakers. Oh, man. T-shirts like you. Cars if you're like my dad, you know. And, you know, my dad's like, I don't understand why you're buying all these DVDs. And I was just like, okay, cars. (laughs) What does he know? Anyways, we're going to go ahead on to our next new segment, Retro Council. So this is going to be where we talk about older movies that we recommend. Things that, you know, Frank and I, we both might have seen. We might have quote. We might rewatch a whole lot. It might be something that I maybe have seen an older movie of, or Frank has seen, and we've recommended to each other, right? Just so we could give you people our thoughts and opinion on it. And we're gonna start it off. Frank gave kind of the hint away with a banger: Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Mm. Scott Pilgrim, and you know Matt. The uh, we, when we were. I think it's last week. We were just kind of throwing out ideas. I'd like to talk about this. I'd like to talk about this or that. And Matt goes, I'd like to talk about an old movie um, this upcoming episode. And without hesitation, I just threw out Scott Pilgrim because I know that Matt and I have endlessly talked about this movie, dissected it at length. And, you know, I just thought, what a perfect movie to kick off, you know, Retro Council with and something that, Matt and I have watched probably a hundred times over. So Scott Pilgrim vs. the world. If you haven't seen it, it's about, you know, a, a character is Scott Pilgrim, right? He has this girlfriend and she has these evil exes and it's like a video game and there's all kinds of fun, like graphics and sound effects. And he's fighting all these, these different boyfriends that have different, almost superpowers. 
and it's just such a great movie if you haven't seen it you have to watch it i had a buddy who hadn't seen it and i recommended it to him we watched it together over facetime together and he was like oh dude this is so great i would compare it if you've seen ready player one which is another great film this is very similar but this is more live action there's not it's not a lot of computer graphics like and that. not only that like this came out 2010 and it was and everybody in it there is not a person in this movie that didn't go on to do like bigger and better things like captain america is in this movie <laughs> you know and he plays yeah. one of the seven evil exes and i aubrey paz michael sarah um i'm gonna butcher her name anna anna kendrick Kenerick, or the 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 pitch perfect girl and that's yeah. just to name a few like this was all these kids who are these young uh, actors and actresses that just so happened to be in this movie and, you know, right at the cusp of them becoming, you know, big stars. And it just to see them like this was their first movie. And it's it's just such a wild ride. What's your favorite evil X? Oh, um, I got to tell you, I I really like um, Brandon Rouse uh, vegan uh, when they had the That's base cool. off. And um, it's like that one. Yeah. I just love how he's like, "Ooh, someone's trying to get funky." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, you, yeah. And, and you hear, you can hear the bass, but like, and it's coming out of the darkness. You can see the bass notes just like flying out of the darkness. Again, this movie has a lot of crazy like graphics going on, and it it really just is absurd and just like you know over the top as far as, but it really sells it and, it and it makes it a complete experience who's your favorite evil x i gotta say it's captain america <laughs> he he's like can you do a thingy on that rail it's called a grind bro <laughs> he's like, like, i got my own skate company he pulled it. <laughs> i think a, a second follow-up and i always kind of like butcher who they are but it's like when they are having the the uh uh the band off or and, um, yes the djs the djs and yes. how you know they come out with like the big dragon or whatever when their music yes. gets to a point and then they defeat scott's band which their their um uh their band name is sex babam and they're here to make you think about death and, and stuff we are sex babam we're here to make you think about dex <laughs> And just and the fact that like when they they the the when the DJs def essentially defeat them like they're blown off stage but then they come back and their song comes on even louder and their power up comes up and it's like a King Kong and it fights the dragon it's so cool but that's the best part too is the music the original yes. music and then it has a uh, I can never remember his name but Macaulay Culkin's little brother oh Ellie. um isn't that um Succession guy. Yes, he's in succession as well. Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin is his name. Yeah. I love him in that movie. He is hilarious. What's his name? Um oh shoot. Um it's the roommate. <laughs> I'm trying I can't think of the character's name, but I love any interaction. Um, like when the when they first go to their apartment. Roman is I or no, he that's his name in succession, but right. I, Yes, I um holy cow. I, I should have something uh, like that, but anyways, right. keep going. They, get, they get to the apartment and it goes like it does like a circle around the apartment and it shows everything that's uh Kieran Calkin's character, what he owns, and everything that Scott owns. It's and everything. He, he owns everything, and then they just show a pile of like rubble in the corner. It's like Scott's clothes or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but that is a great film. It's it's really good. It's super entertaining, especially if you're into games and movies. Highly recommend it. A lot of people will not watch it because they don't like the main character the, as an actor. Right. But you know, I always tell people, move past that. I get the same thing with other movies, especially right. like we'll talk. We'll have to talk about it at one point. But uh, get him to the Greek. It's one of my top favorite comedies but a lot of people won't watch it because they they can't stand russell brand and i say you just got to get past that part because it's an amazing funny movie and i have to say the same thing about scott pilgrim so and one thing that i want to say about scott pilgrim is it is probably the closest we will ever get to a live action legend of zelda movie because if you look at the the format of the movie we have our main character that doesn't have anything at the beginning beginning of the movie 
he gets like this token. He's put on this quest, much like in Zelda. In Zelda, there's typically about um, five to nine dungeons, depending. Each dungeon in the movie is one of the evil exes. So, and not only that, there's a lot of Zelda sound effects and Zelda callbacks. Almost they're they're like winking at the camera. It's like, let's face it, Nintendo's not making this movie right now. You're welcome for this. <laughs> you know? I gotta say, I even like uh, the Matthew Battelle uh, evil ex, the first one. He's, he's like the pirate, you know? right? Yeah, he's the pirate. Pirates are in. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you an email. <laughs> You will pay for your negligence. Oh, I, I skimmed it. <laughs> um, one of the things, you know, and I, I'm i trying to manage my expectations about this, but Netflix is releasing a sequel series anime, and they have every one of the main characters from the movie returning to voice their characters. But the thing about Scott Pilgrim is it tells a very complete story. Like when it's over, I just have no idea what it is. Where where else? What is else they were going to do with it? Much like how you and I have always talked. One of Matt and I's favorite all time movies is Speed Racer, which is severely underrated and is a good movie. Anybody else that disagrees can take a walk. Um, that's also a very complete movie. Like, we're glad they didn't make a sequel because what else were they really going to do with it? Right. So give it a watch. Let us know what you think. You know, if you like it, you don't like it. And we're going to keep doing this. We're trying to mix it up here. So it's not just all the same content and hopefully you like this series, but we are going to move on and we're going to go right back to everyone's favorite segment, but it's going to be a little bit more of a recap. It's children with adult money. Here we go. That is right. We are talking about Vengeance himself. We are still waiting. Where is he? Where is he? The Batman. I want to know. Boy. The Batman. I want to know. Uh, I want to know too. Trust me. And you know, we brought it up last episode. Uh, for those of for those of you that weren't listening to miss last episode. We bought this uh, uh, toy from a company called Sideshow, and every month they send an email called the Monthly Summary, which is the biggest. Just team. got one. I just, just got one the one. other day, and I was like, I almost like started raging. I was like, "Where? Come on! You were supposed to be here in April, and now it's September, and we're now on for you guys, uh, the audience. By the time this episode releases, you will be on day fourteen of Batman Watch, whereas Matt I'm sure. and I. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to show up at their headquarters like this. I'm vengeance. <laughs> I, you know what? You go ahead and do that, and I'll look for your segment on the news. <laughs> like, <laughs> angry fan shows up at toy headquarters demanding his doll. <laughs> do you, you know I'm going to write. I'm going to do something even bigger. I'm going to write a letter. Oh, oh. You know what? You know, I'm on the verge of making a facial expression. Let me tell you. <laughs> But yes, Batman watch. We are going to continue the watch until he arrives. All right. You know, I, we need, we need more information. Sideshow, please, please tell us where he is soon. You know, when he's finally delivered, we can do like the whole uh, John snow and be like, and now our watch has ended. <laughs> yes, exactly. That is what it will be like, but thank you always for listening. Be sure to uh, like, follow and subscribe. And catch us next episode, same season time, same streaming network. Later, everybody.